The way I looked at addiction was, I kind of got four doors that I can go through. I go through the door one, I've already went through door one, I could keep on with my current practices. I'm working on two issues. It's complex, depression and, and addiction. So I could keep doing that piece and keep doing my thing and struggle through life with that door. That was door one. I'm through door one, that's why I'm here, for help. Addiction needs constant work. You're not judged. Nobody judges here. You start to dig in deep into yourself. It took a lot of renovating to get to where it's at. We basically lived here for a year. We we cooked in the We slept on kitchen. the floor. <laughs> we did. We slept yeah, on the floor. Yeah, we and slept the on heat, a mattress Half on the, floor. the time the heat wouldn't work. We had to replace a lot of the thermostats. The furnaces were fine, but we couldn't get it to turn on. The inspiration came from when I was in treatment myself. Shortly after I went into a 12-step program, I felt that we could do a better job than the treatment I was getting. You had commented on the lack of uh, respect. We knew that there needed to be an alternative to prescribing meds as, a, as the first line of defense. It led even more to what we're doing here. I don't know of any other centers that do have a orthomolecular nutritionist on staff. When the blood work's done, she's able to identify your deficiencies and then personalize your nutrition plan. Look at the support you got behind you too, right? You know you're not alone. Yep. You got other guys going through the same thing. To put it simply, orthomolecular just means using natural whole foods, good quality pure supplementation to give the body what it needs to heal, regenerate and repair. My career has always been in health. I've always been interested in health and I've worked in different aspects of it from the medical to the pharmaceutical even and into the clinical laboratory area. As a pharmaceutical rep, I found myself just getting very more and more depressed over time. I didn't feel good about what I was doing or I didn't feel it was enough. I actually ended up relocating to the United States and that's where my whole holistic education began. Every step of the way led me to where I am today and that is helping people with a holistic approach to addiction, recovery and mental health. Door two I look at as not your first attempt. You start getting the help, your family are really supportive, they're understanding. You know, things are going quite well, but you don't actually really believe it. Hey, did everybody get their 11 o'clock supplements that needed them? Oh, well, there's a lady that runs around here and she is very good at making you take your supplements. And she is very motherly. I don't want to be too motherly. Good. Well, I'm a nurse uh, by trade for a long time. We've always sought uh, alternative health treatment. When I found this other alternative way of treating addictions, it was like a natural step and a natural passion that was already there. That combination that I'd always had of kind of a caring background and the nursing, coupled with cooking and nutrition and all of that, was like, yeah, this is going to be good. We thought it was just going to be a business opportunity. We couldn't sleep at night taking their money and, and then knowing that there's, that there's such a high failure rate. So then Jane went and did a lot of research and found a program that was unique. She modified it, uh, and, and this is what we have now. We continue to modify it to make it more and more effective. And door three is really, really, this is serious now. So what's happening is people are starting to distance, and you go through door three, and you're scared now. You're really scared because now you're frightened for the future. I feel like dying. We went to pick up a, a client. He was rough. My family is just destroyed and they, they just can't take it anymore because I've been putting them through everything. Stealing and just late night calls from the police. The police showing up at the door. You name it. It's happened. Well, one of the main differences is that our counselors will treat you with respect and compassion. We focus on the science behind addiction. Repetitive action will build new habits. He really, really went through a rough patch. Well, here we go. <laughs> he was one of those guys who's 
situation was, oh, I feel for you, I know, I know that pain. I was addicted to opiates for about, well, for 10 years. I took, uh, I took courses at Fleming in order to figure out, not only can I, how, how can I help people, but how can I understand addiction from my standpoint as well. This is Brent. Hi, Brent. I'm Will. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. People become to perceive themselves as others perceive them. So you may have someone coming in that thinks they're worthless, thinks they're nothing, has been told that they're worthless, has been told that they're nothing. It's our job to tell them how we perceive them, to show them that they're not worthless, to show them that they mean um, much more than they could ever imagine. Dad, you know I love you, man, and I just really want to be your son. I don't want to be anything other than your son, and you haven't had that in a long time, and I know that's all you want. I was a drafted hockey player by the Oshawa Generals. I broke my leg, and uh, I was prescribed 40 milligram Oxycontins. I have every tool in the book to stay sober. I just can't. I'm almost a licensed addictions counselor. You'll get well here. I did. I was on the couch for two days, sick, worse than you. And I know you don't believe that people could be worse than you, but I was worse than you. We all go in that hole with depression. And in a week's time, you won't even recognize yourself. Opiate withdrawal is horrible. It's like going through the worst flu you've ever had times 10. It's horrific. I could appreciate the pain and the discomfort that he was in and just really try to encourage him to push through that. We got you, okay? You can do this. I called right through the hospital and they said just to bring him right on in. We're going to the Peterborough Regional Health Center helping Brent to detox. So that'll help to ease some of the withdrawal symptoms. So you're coming in the worst of it now, or when do you think that will be? No, right now. The team here went really out of their way. They, they spent time with him at ER, did all the necessary steps to, to help him get through this. Okay, Brent, right around to the next desk here, okay? We'll get you registered and we'll get you back to see the doctor, okay? Hope you feel better. Well, I think it's the whole medical piece of it to make sure that we're doing things that are safe for the clients that are here. Because when they come in, oftentimes they are so in a real dark, hard place. And then you see their, their smiles start to come on their face. Their color changes to their complexion because now they're eating healthy foods. An anti-inflammatory diet found 30% less depression in the people that were randomized to, to, to both groups. 30%. When we've got a lot of inflammation in the body from poor diet, alcohol, or drugs, uh, that also carries into the gut, and quite often the gut will become inflamed. I think if you look hard enough, you can find just evidence to support anything to say it, it's quackery or it's not quackery. With this particular niche that we work in, which is, is addiction, blood sugar control is a huge part of that addiction recovery and that process, and paleo promotes that blood sugar control better than any, any diet that I've seen that's out there. I remember the first clients that we had in the first week and we're looking at each other and we're saying, wow, your face is changing. And they looked at each other and they said, wow, yeah, things are changing. So we notice a very early um, change in physical appearance and vitality, ability to sleep, people to relax. With the guests that arrive when they come in, they're in pretty bad shape. A lot of them, 80%, are in very bad shape. They haven't ate well, they've been using, they come in here and after a few weeks, you do see the change. People notice significantly the, the physical health improvement and the physical well-being. Through our program, we're offering something different and that it is making a difference in the way people feel so that they can manage their recovery. I definitely notice that I feel more energy. I feel like my attention span can last much longer, especially without artificial uses. I'm more empathetical and I care more. As far as the physical things, it's, it's a slow, it's a slow building uh, belief that I actually am getting better physically because I've done so much damage to my body. There's still, there's a lot of regret with what I did. I play sports with all the guys there. I try to sign up events and different things which we can get the competitive nature and just get some of that guy stuff out of there. So often we can get 
worried about the stress or worried about the bills we have to pay or, or the upcoming work meeting or, or what we've done in the past and focus, you know, how can my life be here? And, and it's so much about yesterday or tomorrow and sometimes we forget about today. Uh, so I think just playing music and, and getting into that nature of uh, enjoying connecting with people uh, and just being in that moment, present moment, is, uh, is rewarding in of itself. is my, my spirituality. That's how I connect. And that's a lot of what, what I hope to bring about when I do expressive arts workshops, is getting back in touch with that inner child and, and the delights and surprises and insights that are to be found there. How did it feel to express yourself in, this, in that way? So I thought that it was really cool because it, it takes your mind away from um, everything for a long period of time, probably as we found when we were using our substance of choice. And the drum circle to all the arts, are amazing for therapy with people in recovery. As you see here, you can correct your mistakes and you know that gives people that have made a lot of mistakes with addiction like hope. When the men come here, they often don't consider spirituality as, as something that could help them because outside of here, spirituality wasn't necessarily a word that was in their vocabulary. And we dismiss it so easily that, oh, you know, and I'm not spiritual, I'm not religious. And then we wonder why there's always the sense that these things of, of this world just don't satisfy. Perhaps there's a void there that is something that's aching, uh, a sense of, of purpose and meaning and destiny that only spirituality can really answer those questions because it's the only thing that is set up to tackle these deep questions of meaning and purpose. This is our art cabinet. We've got a lot of different supplies in here, constantly adding to it and changing and expanding on what the clients are liking, just adding as we go. Because I have this loved one struggling with addiction and they're actively still struggling, they're not ready for treatment at this point, so I'm kind of just waiting on the sidelines, trying to be as supportive and respectful as possible. I wanted to bring the love and compassion and you know empathy that I have for them to each one of the clients that I'm able to work with. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just finished group. Um, feeling a lot better than I was before group. Uh, Today's going to be a better day. Three more. Two. One. It's important for someone in recovery um, to be working out, come to the gym every day. Um, it's not just for your body, um, but for me it's, it's a mindset thing as well. After my workout, I'm a little bit more confident. My head is clear. Just being able to lift weights and know that I can do it and I'm not going to be judged. We have a state-of-the-art commercial gym. The swim spa is now <laughs> working. Uh, uh, brand new truck. swim spot, yeah, yeah. The tanker truck delivered the water today. I'm one of the people that administer the Accu Detox. Auricular ear acupuncture that's designed for detoxification of the body. It helps relieve anxiety, depression. The Air Force uses very similar acupuncture points because if a pilot were to take a pill, they can't fly anymore. Explaining what it's used for and what it can help helps people feel a little bit more comfortable to know that it's been used in so many areas. It's only day eight and I truly strongly believe in myself today. He's up on his feet, he's asking for more food, he's smiling, he's getting color black. He asked me today if he looked better. I told him he looked like shit but not as bad as he looked like the other day. So that's a good thing. Gonna head to bed soon. Tomorrow will be day nine. Two emotions come to mind, um, heartbreaking and concerning. Door four is when you basically go what I call off the grid. Your family is no longer looking for you. Uh, there's no support mechanisms, you know, medical, psychiatric, so on. You lose something in the ability to recover. Once you've lost hope, you're through door four, and then you're gone. You're gone forever. By no means am I Brent right now. I'm not Brent and I need to find Brent. I need to know who Brent is. Um, he just wasn't ready, I don't think, to change. There's a fine line between sort of meeting a client where they're at and understanding that, yeah, you can't save everybody. But I think as a human being, I hope that you might. The trouble with door four is it's not a swing door. <laughs> it's not a swing door. You know, you go, 
great shots. You have to be ready and have to be committed to take on that kind of a change. And it's the biggest, scariest thing I've ever dealt with in my life. For me, finding myself, I would not, I would not have been able to do that without the guidance and belief from the staff here and the support. Uh, during Tony's alumni, that had to be one of the first times I've heard his whole story. It was actually choking me up a bit. It's good for, for the guys to hear what he's been through and, and to know that, you know, somebody else has been in these shoes and, you know, if they can do it, I can do it. Uh, one of the exercises that we're, um, we're asked to do is write letters to our family members, uh, to our addiction, saying goodbye to our addiction. I chose to wrote a letter to my father. Do you remember pulling off your belt, Daddy? The sound of the leather sliding through the belt loops? It was such a scary sound, Daddy. Do you remember the feel of the air move as you swung the belt down? Do you remember the sound of the leather striking my skin? Do you remember, Daddy, how I'd squirm and you would get mad and kneel on me? Do you remember telling me the more I moved, the more I would get? Do you remember, Dad? I remember. And my addiction embraced me as you never did. I had to stop many times <laughs> to write that. The trench of, of pain that my that that followed behind wherever my father went I, I spent a lifetime trying to be even just accepted let alone loved just be accepted and i had to watch him rot away from cancer with no resolve there is a stigma associated with um, uh, addictions um, i think more so than there is for mental health issues uh, people are now realizing that depression is a real thing, anxiety is a real thing. Um, but they think that people who are uh, addicted to drugs or addicted to alcohol, well, it's a choice they made. And uh, they have a choice to drink or not to drink, to stick that needle in their arm or not stick that needle in their arm. And so there's very little compassion. You know, the work really starts when the client leaves the facility. Because right. life will give you uncomfortable moments or discomfort. Yeah, because you won't be in withdrawal, but you'll be you'll be going through different feelings of, yeah, life thought cannot processes. Be, life's not easy at times. So. Mm -hmm. Six weeks of uh, absolute uh, learning, good tools, um, re ready to take on the world. Um, but I also have to be uh, cognizant that uh, it is reality. Uh, here is a safe place, outside is not. It takes a lot of courage and bravery to walk through these doors, right? Not only are you battling an addiction, but you're also battling um, what it means to be a man. So when you need help, what does that mean? I'm on my way now to visit my daughter Courtney. I'm a bit nervous. The way that, that addiction affects the family is pretty profound. She's having a bit of a hard time controlling her emotions. They also start to resent the person who's sick. What really came to my mind right away was, at a very young age, being left in a car while you went into a bar several times. Courtney bringing up her past, her childhood, I know in my own mind that I'm definitely responsible for her feeling a sense of abandonment. Her mother and I separated when she was barely six years old. I didn't understand how something like that could control you or why you needed it. And then as I'm getting older, I start to feel these things like abandonment and you putting all these different things over me, including substances. I can't change the past and I, and I can't dwell in the past. I can commit to do everything in my power to be the best example that I can for her instead of the example that I set when she was younger. The addicted brain is different and so it's no longer a matter of willpower. So being angry at somebody for not being able to change something because they're just not trying hard enough is where the, the misunderstanding comes with addiction. For 41 of my 39 years married, I was the perfect person. The last 42 years, I've not been the perfect person, but I can't hang on to that. If I hang on to that shame and guilt, I will go through door four, I know that. There is no question about it. It doesn't matter what comes up in my life at this point. I can handle it, like I've, I've got skills, I've got tools, I've got techniques, I've got support. 
I'm not waiting for it, but I know that somewhere down the line, like I'm gonna hit a speed bump in my life. That's what life is. Things do not always go according to plan. And I don't know if you can see it, like it starts up here, then it works its way all the way down. Like you can see, like you can touch the vein right there. Like. It's hard, isn't it? No, not anymore. No? A lot of people try to hide the fact they were recovery or what they did. To, I wear it like armor, and now that I've got all this field research and drug and addictions, <laughs> um, I'm going to school to be a mental health and addictions counselor. I really, really want people to understand that treatment doesn't have to be a scary place. It should be a place of warmth and love and understanding. And yes, there's a lot of hard work to do, and the guys that, are, that really want to get well do get well. It really is an amazing thing when these guys leave and they are trepidatious. They are thinking, gosh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. And, and, and I say to them, you'll be just fine. And I think the individual counseling is what makes a huge step forward. You start to dig in deep into yourself. What I'm really hoping for is not for those fears to go away. I, I need to hope to see what I really have inside me and, and that's courage and, and the ability to be brave even though I'm crippled by insecurities. That's really stronger. People become vulnerable and they start to open up. We see um, the individual shining through and the leadership developing, confidence building. That's an exciting part for us because we feel that we miss each person that leaves here. Very few treatment centers are focusing on the whole health of the body. Our program, I feel, is accelerated because you know, of that orthomolecular component to it. So when, when guys leave here, I mean, they're physically probably feeling better than they have in years and years. In our society, there's a real overemphasis on symptoms. And the symptoms are just messengers telling us something's out of balance. A lot of buzzwords, the, the microbiome is, is what it's called now. Uh, it was called microflora in the past. You hear some people say good bacteria, bad bacteria. It's all about getting the right balance. You want to make sure that you're taking a safe, dose of, of whatever it is you're taking. There's such a thing as too much as, as well as you know too little. They're both problems. So we want to get things in balance. That's why I love using scientific testing because scientific testing through blood test analysis, saliva testing, all these different type ways that we can check in with a person's body and have it interpret to me what it needs rather than me dictating to it what I think it needs. You're taking this time out of your life to just focus on getting well and recovering from an addiction. I went through the motions like many do where you're enduring your recovery rather than enjoying it. This should be a part of every treatment program there is. I think that's where our success rate is coming from is that um, whole body approach and treating addiction as another symptom and not as the root cause of what is going on with that body. Everybody here is an expert. The kid, I, I, I don't mean us, I mean clients. The guests are all the expert in themselves. I'm not here to tell you this is going to be easy. I'm not here to tell you that this is going to be fun. I'm here to tell you this is going to be tough, but that you can get through it. My last day is Friday. Um, it's coming up soon, a couple more days. It's a tough one to, uh, to forgive yourself, right? It's, uh, it's one of these could have, would have, should have, can't. So let's move forward. All we can do is look forward. So I'm setting up aftercare here with the uh, with my primary counselor. But this is going to be okay. I'm looking forward to the future. It's one flew over the cookies nest, you know. There's a whole lot of sadness sometimes. There's a whole tremendous amount of laughter sometimes. I'm Kevin. I wouldn't say that I was an isolating individual, it was just circumstantial. I lived alone. I didn't have anybody around me constraining me, apart from my cats, and you know, that worked sometimes. <laughs> These are some of the wrong, wrong ones. Uh, Frank, he loves kibitzing, you know, it's great. And uh, Kevin brings a, a more cerebral side to things. <laughs> Yellow's not my best color, but I guess it'll have to do. Nobody really gives a f what you win, you know? <laughs> we are the odd couple. <laughs> Guess which one? I can, is. I can, I can hum the tune if you like. They're definitely odd. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
He's Scottish and I'm Irish, so it rolls off me like water off the back of a duck. I was disoriented. I remember it, though, this is the crazy thing, yeah, is I was really disoriented, and I really needed to go to the bathroom badly, and this building was just, it completely confounded me. <laughs> See, Kevin, I'm a, I'm a totally different opinion, but anyway, if you want to call it disoriented, you call it disoriented. Some of them are characters just like anywhere in life, for sure, absolutely. Some are real characters. This is Tom series, but it doesn't have to be somber. Right? And take time to laugh at yourself. We both blew it as well, and which yeah, is why we, we're back we here. We, we, had, we, had, we had each other's contact information, and we we didn't, both, I didn't check up on we, you. We, he does have his quirks that, you know, you feel like just... <coughs> I was just spinning around and uh, poor on my feet, uh, to say the least. 